guys for time and I would like to know how I can introduce myself. So um, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Susan Papp and I'm the owner of the soup shop. Old yellow house in Copper Hill, so people are kind of quoted it as the yellow sun kind of. But um, today what I'd like to focus on is a lot of different aspects about herbs. And the question is really important to me because sometimes I can just rattle off so much information. But if you have questions, you can stop me at any point in time. It's a very informal, very casual, very low key atmosphere. But the things that you need to know or the things you want to know. But I'm going to start off with a little bit of something different that we didn't talk about in the title of the class is about blood herbs. Because I think if you like herbs and you want to dry herbs and you want to use herbs, growing herbs is really essential because they're super pricey in the store and they're usually faded in the store and they're usually not always good in the store and they're so easy to grow. Um, so, how many of you here have herbs? Grow herbs. Oh, herbs. They're so easy to grow here. Um, it's not like Florida, I'm used to Florida where I can grow pretty much everything year round, but it's definitely just been a little harder season than normal because herbs don't like as much water as you So herbs are kind of the less water. Um, some of, okay, no There's a couple of other seasons. But the thing, a couple of things about herbs that are important to know is like right now people are having a little bit of hard time with basil. It's getting a little bit of a black spot or the leaves are falling off or it's not pushing out. Because basil actually likes a real temperate climate. It likes a little bit of sun. It likes a little bit of coolness, not too much heat. It's kind of, it's real picky about what it wants. Um, the biggest key about basil that I have found that people make the biggest mistake on is in a basil, you want to clip it between the two leaves that are growing. You never just clip it in the middle of a stem. When you clip it in the middle of a stem, it looks well. So find two leaves that are sprouting out and you clip it right between the two leaves. And that's how you harvest the basil. So, and then it'll get bigger and bushier and better and grow more. But if you just clip it in the middle of a stem, that stem wants to die out. So that's one tip about these. The other herbs that I love here is oregano almost is like your ground cover. I mean, you can use oregano in time as ground covers here, but they don't like wet feet and they don't like quite this much moisture. So they like it drier, hotter. And I was explaining to uh, that we have ours on a hillside that's full of rocks and it's dry and it's the hottest part of our yard. We've had a lot of rocks and we grow all the rocks. So there's thyme and there's oregano and there's actually six kinds of thyme. They have irrigated thyme, they have regular thyme, they have English thyme, there's about 20 different varieties. But the oregano and the thyme and the sage, they really like dry heat. So if you can keep them elevated and keep them in a warmer climate, rocks, they like, they like the sun to be on the rocks and be next to them. And they also like to be, all herbs like to be harvested. They like to be used. It's called use it or lose it. So the more often you cut your herbs, the more often you use your herbs, the more they'll grow and the more they'll bloom. But we have a patch probably that's from here to the four doors back there that's just covered in oregano and thyme. We just let it be the ground cover. So it's, it's and we just clip it almost daily. I mean, I go through a lot of herbs. But the thing is, is before you have dinner each night, before you have your breakfast in the morning, whatever, it's easy to just grab your scissors and grab a handful of Put your uh, thyme, or put your oregano, or four or five pieces of sage, or a few pieces of basil, and just get used to using it all the time. Because lettuce and greens and all of our vegetables are wonderful for us, but herbs are a lot more potent in both energy and both nutrition and both fl and flavor. So if you want things to be, especially for uh, satiation. When you want foods to taste good, flavor is an important value. If it's flavorless, you just keep eating more of it, trying to get content. But if it has an intense flavor, whatever flavors that you like, you'll find that you can eat less food and be satiated longer. And herbs are wonderful. So rosemary is one of my very favorites. I'm just going to try some So 
rosemary can be used pretty much on anything. And again, it likes it drier and it likes to be harvested in between where the leaf structures are. So if you take two leaves down like that, you can cut the stem in between those two leaves, not just right in the middle of a wood stem. Then you have a good find. Another thing, too, is you can dry your rosemary, which I dry the rosemary a lot. I use a lot of dried rosemary. It's super easy to do. So basically, you take the rosemary and you just strip it back off its main stem. So you have your fresh rosemary now. I mean, I love this. It's really easy to use. Just do your eggs in the morning. Just take a pair of scissors and put it over the top of your eggs. Or if you're roasting some vegetables, or you're fixing a piece of um, ham, or you're fixing a steak, it's easy just to take your scissors and just take a little handful and just put it right on top. It's a good way to use your herb fresh. Um, when you pull back the board and dry them, and you want to save them, I encourage you not to get them to where they're deep dark brown. Let them have a silver, a little bit of color. But for me, the best way I use a lot is I take baking sheets, just a plain metal baking sheet, lay the herbs out of the baking sheet, put them in your oven on 200 for about 15 to 20 minutes. But just remember, you don't want them dark brown. But you don't want them burn. You want them dry, but you don't want them burn. So just turn the oven off sometimes and just let them stay in there until they get so they get a little crispy, but not brown. Um, and sometimes you may have to do it a few times to get used to it. The thing about that is, though, is once you dry herbs, they really don't like I brought this on purpose to show you. They don't really like to be kept in a container where there might be some potential moisture in them. If you didn't dry them all the way, there's a little bit of moisture there, and you put it in a glass jar, and you put the seed on the jar, they're going to roll. So it's Growing up in Louisiana, we always had to worry about that because moisture was not our friend and we had too much of it. So if you dry your herbs like this, and you're going to put them in the glass jar, which is a good way to keep them, a good way to see them. In the bottom of your glass jar, you can put a piece of cardboard, you can put a little sea salt, you can put a saltine cracker or two. That keeps the moisture out of there. And you can also leave it open until you know it's pretty well dry. But those are things that help keep the moisture out. Uh, the salting cracker thing is a real good trick. <laughs> Even more spinning your salt, just put this cracker in there and keep some moisture out of your salt things. But you don't want to put the lid on things when it might still have a little bit of moisture left. There's um, I threw out a couple of magazine articles that they have all these beautiful things and they string up and tie up herbs and hang them all over your walls and that never works. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good for magazine and it looks beautiful. If you if you want to do something like that, you want the herb bundles and you want to take your string, and it looks really pretty to tie up a nice herb bundle and put a really pretty tag on it as a gift that works great if you're going to use it in a soup or a stock pot or a you know, pot roast that week, mm -hmm. but not that long. So it'll get moldy and it'll get um, deteriorated and it won't have a sweet, still, still the flavor that you want to have. What I do, what you can do though, is I have a rod in the closet where my hot water heater is, because that's the driest, warmest room in my house. And that's where I have hanging herbs, or I want something to be dry. That's the only place I can keep it, but I know it's going to stay dry and stay warm. So if you have a space in your, something, a room where you have a hot water heater or something like that, and you know that space stays really dry and actually a little bit warm. Coolness doesn't help. Um, questions on that stuff? I do have a question. Yeah. Um, how would you implement a dehydrator? I, I love my dehydrator, but I go through them so fast. Mm -hmm. Dehydrator for 12 hours works great. And I use, I have 10 shelves. But my dehydrator stays so full cool, either tomatoes or veggies at certain times that I want to dehydrate. It's much easier for me to do on cheap things. And I find it's much easier to clean up and it goes much faster. But the dehydrator is great. You just have to set them on about ages and hours. So you've got to be slow and low. And then you have to make sure you take them off the sheet pan and make sure they're dry. The other thing that most people do is they take their herbs and the first thing they do is put them in a plastic bag and put them in the refrigerator. And that's the worst thing you can do. So herbs do not like, again, remember the moisture content. So the best thing you can do is take a paper towel or a dry dish towel and wrap your herbs up in a dish towel or a paper towel. And then you can put them in your repair and they'll keep for weeks like that. But try
trying to do too much at a time, and you might want to separate them, like your rosemary, your thyme, and your basil, even basil, it does not want to be kept in a moist environment, like in a plastic jar or in a baggie. If you do put it in a baggie, do a paper towel first or a dish towel. We use a lot of dish towels. We, we ration paper towels in my house. My husband is, is not so happy about that, but we do. We only get two, two rolls a year. He's not happy about that. That's, how, that's our ration. I'm not, I'm not that. So there's a lot of things you can do um, as far as drying them to keep them and use them all the time. So putting them on a sheet pan. Now this, I'm going to show you, is dill that I dried this morning on a sheet pan. And then I just crumble it up and make it really nice and fresh. And you can, if you want to, dill like this. And it smells really, really Is that the seed or the other part? This is the, the, the leafy part. Oh, I had a seed, I'll show you that in two minutes. Dill is really good about self seeding. Any of you grow dill? That's the only herb I've never been able to grow. I've tried it. And everybody wants it. People at, who come in a restaurant a lot and ask for it. it. If you let it self seed itself and don't use it for one year, it'll fill up a little bit better. But remember, it still wants to be drier. It doesn't want too much water. This temp these this kind of weather is going to not its friend. It wants to dry, just like flowers. Flowers don't, there's the roots may like a little bit of moisture. The flower which is not like to be wet all day long. Like this the rains, you know, our flowers are kind of going, ah, give me some dryness. Um, so that dry area they like better. But this herb, <clears throat> why not take the dill? This was just on a sheet pan, and then I just crunch it up. I'm not super picky if I have a few stems because you can just crunch those up as well. And then when you have your extra jars, you can keep the jars, the spices that you bought, and then just label them. Own pressure. I will say that these kind of things to me are probably the single biggest waste of people's money because they read recipes and it says you need a half a teaspoon of this and a half a teaspoon of this and a half a teaspoon of this and then you spend fifty dollars and then two years later I go to people's homes and where are those herbs sitting? That entire it's the same. They, they don't have that long of a shelf life. Six months and you need a. So if you look in your seasoning cabinet and you have stuff that's been in there for a year, it's pretty much done. And so that's one of the flyers I gave you is a herb exchange. You don't always have to have exactly what that recipe calls for. You just a lot of times what it calls for. A herb is a taste of time. You know, you can use rosemary or you can use, you know, um, something a little different. Instead of spending so much money trying to be exactly what the recipe says, don't be afraid to switch it up a little bit and use what you have, especially if you're growing it. Dill <coughs> can be hard to grow, but again, let it seed one year and don't harvest this. So I dried these today. Well, just don't harvest this top for a year or two. For a year or two. Let it, it's from like asparagus, you know, it takes two or three years for it to even begin. It takes two or three years for this to start self seeding. And again, you dry, not too much water, and then you harvest it. I clip these tops off without the stem, and I clip the leaves separately. So the leaves, you can see, they're much greener and brighter. And that is amazing on salmon, or amazing on a potato salad, or amazing in a pasta salad. It just adds so, so much flavor. High in nutrients, high in chlorophyll, and really good for you. And easy, easy to store. Easy to grow, pretty much. These, the top of the dill, is what most people use for to pickle. Right? So they use it for pickles, and they use it for brines, and things like that. I'm not a canner, because I think it takes a lot of work, and you really need to know what you're doing. And it's actually a science, you have to do it. I, I like to do things by the seat of my pants. I have to change it up. You really can't do that when you're painting. You need to do it the right way. With the instructions, I'm like, oh, I don't think I'll throw a bacon in there. I don't think I'll throw some garlic in there. I'm like, no, that changes the acidity of everything. You really can't do that. But what I do is I take the tops of these dill, and I'll take a jar similar to this. I save all my jars. I have a ton of paper jars. And I'll put the dill in a jar, 
with some sea salt and vinegar. And I'll stuff this full of the dill before I put the white vinegar. You can use rice vinegar, white vinegar, or we need red. And then I put some sea salt in here. Don't put the garlic, because garlic can cause botulism if you don't refrigerate it constantly. But this is what I use when I want to make some salad dressings, or I want to make it with my fish, or I just want to add it to any um, herbal dressing that I'm making, or any herbal product. It's wonderful for the potato salad. But you can keep that as a vinegar that you can use as a flavor reliever. And you don't have to refrigerate it. If you put something like a vegetable or a piece of garlic or something like that, then you do need to refrigerate it. Olive oil also does not make it safe for the counter all the time. Vinegar does, especially a little sea salt and vinegar. But olive oil and on the counter is not a guaranteed safety mechanism. But I love it for olive oil. So, um, the rosemary dried goes good on anything. When you make a stew, when you make a crock pot, when you make a beef pot roast, when you're making lamb, anything like that, you can put the rosemary on top. It's also really good. One of the interesting things about rosemary is it helps your memory. Yeah. He said he wanted to double up somehow. Like, no. <laughs> it does it does help your memory. That's one of the things about rosemary. But it also makes a really fun, um, pretty thing to put on your place. If you want to have some roasted vegetables, or you want to do a charcuterie board, or you want to have some cheeses and meats, um, it makes just a really beautiful side dish on there. And I take every time I am working with basil or rosemary in the kitchen at the shop, people always come in and go, "What are you doing?" I can smell because we are stripping a lot of the stuff off the stem. Um, and when you just want to go brain dead, you don't feel like doing anything, instead of turning on the TV, just get all your herbs out. Get your thyme and your rosemary and all those things. And just strip them off the stems and make them work. You can dehydrate them if you want to. Or you can put a sheet pan if you want to. Or you can add to the vinegar if you want to. But remember, if I was going to put this in the refrigerator, I would. Is that? Yeah, well, I was going to finish. I don't know how to do that. I think that's. That's, that would be a Nancy skill, right? Nancy skilled it down. Um, so if I want to put this in the refrigerator, tell me to last for three, four days, or five days, to use on a board, or to use fresh. You can even use these as skewers to grow. Um, I would wrap it in a paper towel or a fish towel and put it in the refrigerator like that. I would never put it in a baggie, or a glass jar, or any other kind of bowl. That's what I'm saying. So, spices, as far as herbs go, again, I encourage you to know that most spices are fresh herbs, dried, and they're expensive, and most of them you can grow. I, mean, I even have cumin growing. I'm sad that my basil plant from Florida has to live inside here. I'm not cheating, not basil. My, um, my favorite, my favorite seasoning is babies. I use babies in everything. I'm not having you got a soup from the soup shop, but you're probably gonna find these two or three babies. 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 They come from a baby tree. Um, but you'll always find some of this in your soup pretty much. Babies are so full of nutrition. Um, if you read up on bay leaves, the list is about 40 miles long, not 40, about 40 items long about the things they can do for you and how good they are for you. Um, in Louisiana, we use them so much. But I find people here don't use them quite as much. Um, I think maybe it's because it's a tropical plant. Um, but my bay tree lives in my house here. It's wonderful. But you can see how many I dry. And I keep these in this wonderful or throw in soup, throw in a pot of pot roast, throw in a, a veggie. It doesn't matter, they're pretty neat. But they'll give a flavor and aroma and a, and a little bit of texture. Now, I eat them, but most people just take them out. You dry them the same way as the other ones? Same way. And are they just as good when they're fresh? I think they're better fresh, but you know, they're, when you pull them off the, the stem of the tree, or it's actually a bush, mine's only about that big, but the, and the stem's pretty thick. Mm -hmm. But once you pull them off, you need to either use them or, or dry them. And I find dry, they keep quite a long time. And I know people tend to want to put like a beige. Um, if I have a pot of soup going off, maybe take about that much. 
<laughs> I like the flavor, I like the fun. And also, if you want another little tip, if I feel like my soup's a little thin, you add a few bay leaves, it actually absorbs my moisture and I'll pick it up just a little bit. So, sometimes I think, mm, it's looking a little thin there. And the same with rosemary. One thing about dry rosemary, I will tell you, that I have learned the hard way, I think some of you were in my class, I think all the mistakes I make, is if you'll put dry rosemary, like in your potato salad or your pasta salad, people will tend to want to spit it out because it's still a little hard. So it's great in soups or stews or anything that you're going to cook. Um, over your grilled meats, you can use it that, perfect. But if you just put it in a, in a potato salad dry, cold like this, you put it in a food processor, it'd be okay. Dry like this, it may tend to want to pick out the pieces. You know, can you put the basil and grind it up in a food processor too? Absolutely. And we, I harvest so much basil because we make pesto by the gallons, you know, so it's a little bit different. But I harvest so much. It's there's nothing wrong with taking your basil, destemming it, putting it in a bag, and putting it in the freezer. When you make pesto with it a year later, it's going to be fine, you know. And also, pesto does not require all basil. It's great. It tastes wonderful. It takes a lot of basil to make that. So feel free to change up your pesto. I do half spinach, half basil, half arugula, half basil. And then pine nuts are so expensive. I use almonds or pecans or walnuts or anything that's, walnuts are really good because they take on the flavor more of the basil, I think. So feel free to kind of switch that up a little bit. And you don't have to blanch it, you don't have to do anything. You just, Tear it off the stem. You definitely do need to de-stem it. And then you can put it in the bag and you can put it in the freezer. We probably have, because um, my husband has got to label the bags because all the greens are the same in the freezer. So you're not sure. Parsley has a very, very distinctive flavor. It's very different than basil. Next question. If, um, I don't wash mine for herbs. Oh, I use them. Is that good about? If you wash them, again, the herbs don't like the moisture as much. So I put them on, I put it, I have a table, um, an island table, and I put towels on the island table. And then I just put them on there and kind of shake them. Just make sure so they're not them. dirt or residue. But once you wash them, then you really need to dry them. So if you want to go to all that effort, if you do have a little bit of moisture on them, like basil or rosemary, you want to freeze it. You can freeze this rosemary and just season as well. You don't have to dry it. It's okay to have moisture because the freezer is going to kind of zap that out of it. So it's very yeah. Can you process the bay leaf too? Can you pulverize it? It doesn't work as well. No. I thought so. I used to buy loved it. Mm -hmm. um, bay leaf, but you can't find it. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can come. It can affect the throwing a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Find yeah. it around. You know, I just own it in the cafe. I get very over concerned about that kind of potential. Um, so, I mean, one of my very favorite spices in the world is the tar. Um, and it has a little bit of brown that they use in it. But they just pulverize it to powder. So well, that's the way this was, but I can't find it anymore. Yeah. And I love cooking with it. Well, uh, so it's a tar. How many of you have used the tar before? Not use it? Is it tar? Is it a T or not? It's really a wonderful Middle Eastern Mediterranean spice. But there's, and now that I've used it so much, I've gotten it from like six different countries. It's all different. You know, some of it has sesame seeds in it, some of it has thyme in it, some of it has oregano in it, some of it has. So each, you know, the Palestinians have a way of making it, and the Greeks have a way of making it. So each tar is very different. So it's based on. Would you get it from? Yeah. Any water, sir? Any else? Additional. Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. We'll have to put it on. If you chew it long enough, you will taste the licorice. Mm -hmm. But it works in a low dense mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I make mm -hmm. with it, which is a vegetarian mm -hmm. It really adds an interesting flavor. Mm -hmm. And you can make a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit of it. Will give it a whole new complex of flavor. So when you have to learn how to swag, that's crazy. To see how that tastes like. So chew it up. How many of you have ever tasted a watermelon seed? 
Right. So you can take a lot of notes, you put it in your mouth, you okay. chew on it completely. I hope it's not faded or completely chewed. It tastes like a pecan. Oh, so right. it will taste exactly like a pecan. You have to chew it long enough to do that. And one of the things that most Americans sure do not do is what? Chew. Chew their lips. They okay. swallow it. I had to tell my husband sometimes, I'm like, oh, let's chew some of that food. Three things happen when you chew. Number one, when you chew your food, your digestive enzymes get much stronger. They want to go say, okay, I'm ready to digest and use that food. So chewing also affects your olfactory nerves and all of the smells, tastes, and it tells your brain, hmm, I'm I'm feeling the food. I'm feeling cold. I'm feeling happy about it. I'm feeling tasting the flavors. But what happens when you suck? What happens if you don't chew the food? Indigestion. Indigestion. You're not absorbing your nutrients by the third. This is the biggest thing that happens when not chewing. Because we eat twice as much. Because we're not really full. And we just push it down. So, Try to slow it down a little bit. Try to chew your food. And when you chew it, you're going to find all kinds of interesting flavors. And your body's setting it up to digest it, take it in, use it, and use the energy. What is food? Energy. It's energy for your body. We love the taste. We love the flavors. And herbs are the additional flavor and taste. So one additional thing about herbs is even dill. Even the rosemary, and I don't have the time because we're trying to count. But the smaller the leaf, the more nutrition. So I think the smaller the leaf, the higher the nutrition will be in there. So a tiny leaf, pretty damn small, really tiny. It's just tons of nutrition for your body, or fill with nutrition, and it's actually really good for you. Now, this is a vivid jar that I have, and this is my mixed herbs that I use for when I make tomato sauce, meatloaf, anything kind of Italian are um, especially for my meatloafs. But this is a combination of dried oregano and dried sage. So I'll fry oregano and sage and make my omelet. So you can make omelets maybe you like oregano and sage and thyme. Or maybe you like rosemary and thyme and sage. Sage has a very distinctive flavor. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's very, like, it's, you either like sage or you don't like sage, it's not the hell. But sage is just really wonderful. And pork, um, it's really wonderful with any, most of the meat products that you have. But it also, you can take a few fresh leaves <laughs> and put them in a skillet, not butter, a little bit of olive oil, but it will burn them. When you go to fancy restaurants and you see the fried sage leaf, they have not done this olive oil. It's better we'll fry it and burn it really fast. So a little bit of olive oil, fry it really fast, one minute or less, and you can put it on top of a salad and it makes it look really pretty and fancy. So, but you can take your <coughs> dried herbs and make your own blend. Make your own special. And what else can you do with that? Yeah. It makes a great gift. It can be Susan's, Susan's meatloaf as uh, herb blend. And then you can get that as a nice gift. And it's fun. It doesn't mean that yourself. But the things, oops, it's really on purpose. But my sage leaves, as you can see, are probably pretty large in here. You can put this this entire thing, if you'd like to, in your food processor. Mm -hmm. And really blend it hard. Blend it, and blend it into a really fine spice. But the more you break it down, the less of the nutrition it will have. Because every time you break an herb down, like right now, this is full on potential nutrition, flavor, everything. But drying it breaks it down a little bit more, chopping it breaks it down a little bit more. Every time you expose oxygen to anything, you, it starts to what? Decay. So it's losing its full potential. So then every time you chop it, remember it's going to lose some of that full flavor. That's why we try. Herbs in the store, it says you use a half a teaspoon and then these you can use more. The problem is, this stuff's usually already old. <clears throat> and I've never been in a home where I've 
Health prisons with food for preparation in a pantry grill. I haven't seen 57 jars of spices that they don't use. And most of the time, I'm like, it's pretty much all compost. And I see packages that are like, the hormone hasn't made that label in like five years. So I don't know if we can trust that one. But I do. I have to have something that I don't put around. Like, I don't put around the cinnamon. This is a cinnamon jar. But I'll keep the jar, put something else in it, and just forget what. The cluster of things. But remember, if you don't dry your herbs fully, you want to put something in the bottom of the jar to keep it high, keep it unmoist, keep it completely dry. Again, another good space to find some place in your house where things stay a little warm and a little dry. Mine just happens to be in a hot water heating closet. It's the perfect place. Now that's just where you store them while you're drying them. No, that's after I've done it. Oh, okay. So put in your glass jars. Correct. Yeah, anything. If I don't think it's completely dry, mm -hmm. I can leave it in. I'll leave it there. But if you believe it is, you go ahead and move it to the kitchen. Or yes. Okay. <laughs> and if you want to, you can put a little bit of salt in the bottom of it, or salty pepper, or a piece of mm -hmm. cardboard. Mm -hmm. Not cardboard that has writing or ink or any that good stuff, just a plain cardboard. Um, so, Making your own herb limbs is wonderful. And this one, these, if you touch them, you see they're really crunchy, dry. It's the sage and the oregano. Oregano grows here like a weed. And people buy it in the grocery stores like four stems for $3. And I just, no one boggles the mind. Remember, same with oregano, rosemary, thyme. If you hold it at the top and backslide it, it's the easiest way to get it off the stem. And then you can chop it up or dry it and use it if you want to. But again, time, time takes time. Time takes time. I was once working with a whooping the cordon bleu chef, and he was watching me stand the time. And then he said, Susan, people are paying $50 a plate for that meal. They do not want any of those stems of time in that time. And I'm not that picky. Because the stems, if it's picked fresh, and then the stems are pretty soft. So it's up to you. You can, you can take your time with that. Take your time. <laughs> um, <laughs> other things to do is you look, when you're de stinning it, do it over a white dishcloth, then you can tie it off. If you're doing it over something like this, you'll lose half of it and you won't get your little So it's easy, a white plate, white plate's easy to de stem it off. Yeah? When you said, Earlier, you said something about rosemary and you're harvesting, don't cut it this way, cut it this way. I didn't get what you said. So, what you want to do is, you can see, I cut them where there's thin leaves coming out right here. Uh -huh. Same with basil. You'll find two basil leaves right there, and you want to cut it right on the top of that. If I cut in the middle of the stem, the stem's going to get moisture and it's going to die. Uh -huh. Where it's a little throat at the bottom. So, you the two leaves down yeah. and cut it right there. Right below the two leaves, or right at, at the top, maybe at the top. Get with the two leaves come out, and you cut it in the If you cut it in the middle of the stem, same with basil. If I cut that in the middle of the stem and basil, that, that stem will die out. It won't start fishing out like that. So just mm -hmm. as close as you can. Yes. And the basil, it's easy, because you'll find two leaves, and you'll find more of a stem, and then two leaves and more of a stem. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. What about stage? Because leaves everywhere. But the sage is, uh, I don't have a sage to show you, but on the sage, it's really important to take, go to the top of the stem and use those three or four leaves right there and cut it out right at the bottom. So you're just taking just the leaves off. You're not taking the stem. It wants to be pruned just the leaves. In fact, it's almost better to pull the leaves off. So when I go to the herb garden, first thing I have is I have a basket with a dish towel on the bottom of it, and I have a pair of scissors. Those are the things I do. So, I have an herb garden I already use everywhere. There's a little bit of things you gotta find. Them. But, basket or bowl, whatever you like, a pair of scissors, and a dish top of bottom. So that you can keep up. And scissors are the best way to move your hands because it's hard to prune them easily. And it's so much faster. Another thing is using your herbs in cooking. Scissors are great. Scissors just chop them up. It's really hard to get on the bag of and get all your rosemary chop or get your time or whatever. It's much easier to use scissors and just put them up than you can use it on your board. 
So again, bay leaves. These are super dry. We put the lid on that and not have to keep it in the hot water heat closet. We have a lot of This rosemary is really dry, but I don't put the lid on it until about four or five days even after I put it on the sheet pan. Because I want to make sure it's really dry. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful product and I don't really don't want to waste it. The same with the oregano and the sage. Now you don't have to mix these. You can keep them a couple. You might want to keep your sage one, your oregano one. But those are those herbs are so easy to grow here. They just proliferate. There's a couple herbs that I love. They're a little bit hard to grow, like sorrel. Sorrel likes it more moist. Does anybody grow sorrel here? It's wonderful. It's it goes wild. There's tons of wild sorrel here, and you can pick the wild sorrel everywhere. It's like amazing. It's very limiting to the taste. Um, English sorrel has a much bigger leaf, and you can grow that if you want to be more in a pot with a little bit more moisture. What does it look like, sorrel? It looks like a large basil leaf, almost. Yeah, it's a little bit larger than English, English variety is. But the wild stuff here, I'm in love with it, and it's rampant in the woods, so you can find it pretty much everywhere. Um, questions? When you have stuff that you've dried in your air for like four days and you're not worried that moisture just from the air will revamp it? No, what she would, one of the tricks that my mom does, but she's not she probably sure it's dry enough, is she'll put a paper towel on top of her. She do what? She'll put a single paper towel. Well, remember, I limit the paper towel so we don't have enough to go around, but my mom doesn't limit her paper towel. She buys me, she wants to. Uh, so she'll put a paper towel on top of here. And then put the lid on it. It's just anything in there to keep that moisture from out and dry leaves. And also, you can wrap the fresh leaves and keep them in your fridge with a paper towel or a dishwasher. Same with <laughs> lettuces. You know, lettuce doesn't really like to be a plastic bag. So I take my lettuce out and wrap it in a dish towel. Lightly moist the lettuces. Okay. Very lightly moist. And you just wrap it in a dish towel. It's funny, you open up my refrigerator and it's like, all these dish towels. <laughs> because <laughs> everything's wrapped up in dish towels. You know, all our vegetables. Now, uh, my husband thinks I'm a nut case because he's like, but they last forever. And so that makes a good thing. But each one of my things, even my beets are wrapped in dish towel, and my lettuce is wrapped in a dish towel, and my squash is wrapped in a dish towel, so I just have all of them like that. But remember, stay warm. Yes. How long will this take now? The dry ones? Yes. Forever. But I encourage you to use them because, because the longer they stay in the room, it's a living product, it's a living food. So just try to use them. If you don't use them, what can you do? Share them with somebody who's not using them. So this is, this is the culprit of where people get caught up spending a ton of money and not investing it to me. How many of you have a lot of spices you don't use? And it's So find. What I try to teach, even like my son, who's just now a buddy, new cook, is 25. Um, try to find five or six spices that you can play a lot and use those. And then just add one every so often. You know, he he loves the smell of cloves. He didn't know what to use it in. But it works great in apple butter. It works great in chutney. But he's not going to make apple butter. He's not going to make chutney. He's, you know, he's just barely getting his fish and his meat cooked. Mm -hmm. He's just learning those things. And chicken. Rosemary is fabulous in chicken. Dill is fabulous in chicken. Um, if you want to take some bay leaves and put them in the pan underneath the chicken before you roast it, or also you can put bay leaves in a cavity with an onion inside your chicken. It's a great way to get that aroma and flavor, and you can take it out when you serve it. You make a choke off. So I put a whole onion and I take it away. This many bay leaves and Big handful of my dry rosemary, and I stick it in the cavity of my chicken before I roast it. Because putting it on the outside is great for the very end, but the beginning will just kind of fall off. You know, stick off. So I encourage you to stuff your chickens. I just like stuff your chickens with herbs. It's wonderful. Um, questions on any specific herb? Yes. 
I don't cook with lavender so much because it's a very distinctive taste. I personally love fennel. I personally don't like lavender. So it just depends on you. And a fruit salad, I love it. But other than that, it's such a distinctive flavor. Any soup I've ever used it in, I've used it with that chilled gazpacho and it kind of works. But do you dry it before you use it? I don't because I like to use lavender and like homemade in the middle of orange. Orange is a beautiful plant. The bees love it here. They love, love, love the orange. And the little blue flowers are edible. And they look beautiful on that fruit salad or on top of the green salad. So I use borage more than I use lavender. Borage is also a very healing plant. You can use it for a lot of different things. It's wonderful. And the flowers are beautiful. And you will find you can have 20 beds of flowers and all the bees are going to be in the borage. <laughs> They're little bitty flowers. They just love it. No? Somebody else have a question? You do that, Mitchie. So we got it. Tarragon is my favorite herb of all herbs. Where is it? I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it in my house. No, um, I eat tarragon. I use the French tarragon. My plant died here, so I don't, I'm not as good at growing it here. I think it needs a basal temperate more climate. It doesn't grow up here. It doesn't grow up here. Thank you. I wonder why mine died. But I love it's uh, in a pot in a potato salad, or chicken chicken salad, or on fish. It's the best. Now I have two friends who are growing it very well, and they bring me because I use it in my chicken salad at the shop. Uh, I love her, and the dry is eh, meh. You know, it's okay. You get some of the flavor, but the fresh is just amazing. Um. So if you can grow it, we'll power to you, bring me a little bit of it. I'll be happy to share it with you. But there's a um, English and there's a French. They're very they're long leaf times and they're short leaf times. They're all amazing. You add it to the chicken salad and it picks it up a whole new notch. You can buy them, but you can't buy them dry if you can't grow it fresh. That's what I have to do. I was looking at a couple of things. Some of the things that I was going to share with you that you can do with herbs that I really, really like is I love corn grits and cornmeal and those kind of things. So what I do is I'll take some of these fresh dried herbs, just punch them up in my hand, and I have my savory mix and my plain mix. But I'll take a bag of cornmeal and add a good handful of those dried herbs and just mix it up and shake it up and have it ready to use. So if I want to make um, roasted potatoes, or if I'm going to sprinkle some cornmeal on my fish, or if I'm going to sprinkle some cornmeal on my roasted vegetables, I have a savory orange flavor for them to infuse. Really easy. You can also do that with bag of flour. Separate out your queen flour and then your herb flour. So you can mix whatever your favorite herbs are, but not fresh, only the dry. Because if you take a fresh herb, and you add it to your flour, what happens? It's moist. It's Yeah, the moisture content does not do well enough. So, with the dried herbs, I will have, we can use rosemary, we can use sage, we can use thyme, we can use any dried herb you want. And so, I carry one, one um, flour that's plain flour and one flour that's herb flour, and then I have the same with my cornmeal, and then I have the same with my grits. I have half like one of savory. It's called savory when you have that herbs. You pick your favorite ones. Yes. You were mentioning flowers. I have one rosemary that grows little blue flowers. Mm -hmm. Add those. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. They're wonderful. You can dry those as well. And you can, they're totally edible. They're beautiful on top of meat prepare or anything like that. The horse goes to the meat. The horse goes to the meat. Yes. Yeah, the thing is, I was bunch of herbs or flour, you know what that means. <laughs> they're, they're saying, okay, I need to have babies because I'm going to survive. Yeah, it's time to give back to nature and grow more of my product. So they're trying to have babies. And then it's the flavor of second basil will have the bud on top. Your flavor starts to disintegrate. The bigger the flour, the less flavor you're going to have. So if you keep clipping off the, unless you want to have seeds. If you want to have seeds, then what? 
Okay. Let it go. And let it flip. Okay. You can save this and let it smell. Let it drop on the ground right there. You can, like I said, we you know, we let our oregano flower. And now we have an entire happy of our oregano. But it's fine. I can go. Um, I'm going to give you one tip before I start to finish up on the picture. I've got the first one. Sure. One up. You need to make cornbread dressing. What would you put in there? The same thing. The same. I would use sage, oregano, thyme, rosemary, those herbs. Tarragon, not so much. Um, uh, sorrel, definitely not. You know, so those really um, intense herby flavors. So they work really good. Um, the dill, remember, dill is going to take on a whole different therapy. I stick with that with my salad dressings and fish. It just, it just, to me, it has a distinctive flavor. It's great with cake salad. It's great on fish. It's great on salmon. It's great on roasted vegetables. So we have roasted vegetable night, because I have so many vegetables in my house. But we used to cut up two or three sheet pans of vegetables. There's a little bit of olive oil. Maybe smash three or four pots of garlic on top, and then dry herbs. And uh, because I have three layers in my oven, the three sheet pans are in the oven. Roast those vegetables for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I put them in three Tupperware containers. And guess what? You make a pot of rice, and every night you have a, you just put, cook yourself a piece of meat if you want to. But the roasted vegetables, make a pot of rice, it's just easy, it's done, it's already there, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. And you can use up all those vegetables you might not have used. Like how many of you have some squash you like need to use up, mm -hmm. or an acorn squash that you like need to use up? You slice that. So it's kind of my way of using up everything I have: leftover onions, leftover potatoes, leftover zucchini, leftover anything like that. And just I do a roast and fish night, and then it gives me extra meals to have anytime I need it. Yeah. Um, I mentioned parsley. Is that just ordinary? Yeah. yeah. I love parsley, and actually it goes in my green goddess dressing, it goes in most of my soups, almost all my soups have some parsley in it. It's just parsley has a very distinctive flavor. So if you put parsley in something, and I have probably right now 40 bags of frozen parsley, or I've just chopped my parsley almost whole, put it all in the freezer, because all my savory soups are parsley. Um, and parsley is wonderful. But you taste it before you put it on your things because it has a flavor that's even much more distinctive than rosemary or basil. It's um, very, very, very savory. And it's one of these, and it's very high in chlorophyll. So it's very high in nutrition for your body. It's it's like eating a sprig of parsley and you got two hands of bowls of spinach. That's as far as nutrition works. And herbs are so much for nutrition. So it's so deep. Curly parsley, flat leaf parsley, and they all have a different flavor. So curly parsley is basically what they use to make place look pretty, but it doesn't have hardly any flavor. Uh, flat parsley has the most intense flavor. Um, Italian parsley is a little bit less. But you have to decide what your palate likes. But just chew on it a little bit to see how you like it. Another um, maybe the two favorite things is that I also love my herb butters. So you can just take an ice could be an ice cube tray and any one of the fresh herbs that you like are dry herbs. They use fresh and soften the thing about it, mix your herbs with the butter, and you put them in the ice cube trays and freeze them. And then you want to add it to a pot of rice or a pot of soup or on top of a fish or it's ready, it's done, with those fresh herbs, and you know, they stay really to the fragrance. Um, put it on top of some grilled chicken. Hmm. It's just there, and it's ready, and it's easy to use. So it makes the most wonderful addition to flavor, especially in that. Uh, I cook grits a lot now. So and I'll take two cubes and just put it in my grits, and it's just the flavor is You can smell it, and it's easy to use. And you don't have to wrap that in the evening with cotton chicken. Sure. Any herb, whatever you like. Rosemary works good, thyme works good, parsley works good, sorrel works good, tarragon works amazing. Um, if you have a cube of frozen butter with tarragon and thyme in it, and you put it on a piece of salmon, 
it makes it to all the pool and nothing. It's just like it's just like you went to a really expensive restaurant then. Um, you can do the same with olive oils, but be very careful that just because you put something in olive oil does not mean you just leave it on the counter all the time. Okay. So if you put a piece of garlic and you get some fresh rosemary, it doesn't mean you just leave it sitting there on the counter because it will eventually uh, those see little bubbles in the middle of what the little bubbles be. <laughs> yes, it's hard that. And you don't want to make any time for that. Just keep it in the refrigerator. Okay. It will get hardened a little bit, but that's okay. You set on the counter. Just don't believe it on the counter. It's not as bad as years ago. Yeah. And Florida had to believe it's really bad. So, so the herb makers, the herbs and oil, and there was another, oh, the other good one is to create herbal consoles. One, there's three things that I would never mind a grocery store. Number one is salad dressing. She usually got oil in there that I do not like or would not eat, and it's usually full service. That's why it's sitting on the counter. Um, that's why I think one of my shop my salad dressings are in the refrigerator. So I'm going to shoot full of what? They're, they're full of like, soybean oils and uh, corn oils that's and all the oils that you really shouldn't consider. Like, you preserve them both. And loaded with preserve. Yes. Loaded. Why do you think you can sit on a counter with me? So I would never buy salad dressing. I also never buy croutons at the grocery store because if you ever read the macro package, <laughs> like, like, you read it, you're like, uh, I wouldn't feed that to my dog. I don't even want my compost because it's just like, that's good my good soil, you know? So if you want to make your own croutons, I mean, I love the Indian bread. I don't know if you like that. There's also grateful bread. They make great milk bread. Just Cut your bread into little um, cubes. You can do it on a whole slice if you want to. And then chop your fresh herbs on top of it. Roast them in the oven just a little bit. You can put them in baggies, but don't leave them there for like months at a time. Use them up. But you can make your own fresh croutons, and they're really good. And they're great on soup, and they're great on salads, and they're great on top of everything. And it's something that I encourage you to make bread and pot. And what type of bread? I like the Indian. Because they do a sprouted sourdough, and like a sourdough type of bread. It makes it really much better. Mm -hmm. I just, there's not any bread in the grocery store I would buy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't even name one. But I don't, there's nothing in there. Because if you look at the label, it's kind of scary. Especially the grocery store brands. <laughs> Those are really scary. Mm -hmm. My son, even, he grew up knowing. If it has five ingredients or less, you can have it. <clears throat> Mom, we're like stuck in the produce section. Um, and he says that we can never be ready. This is where I got my cool stuff. But that's just not the only way. You see, salad dressings, croutons, bread, eggs, all kinds of things like that. That is just some milk. I don't like grocery store. We have so many good farmers here. We have so much access to good stuff. <clears throat> Really seek out your farmer. Really seek out the shops that sell the stuff the farmers they eat. Really seek out the local business because you can get almost all of them done really well and not buy the stuff that's full of preservatives and full of artificial ingredients and full of just junk. And you're not supporting anybody but some company in the sky that adds the junk. I don't know if any of you saw my latest post on my the continuous muffin. Missing out. So I have a muffin that we picked up at the hotel breakfast, you know, the free breakfast. When you breakfast, you get the hotel. Mm -hmm. And so I, this muffin said delicious chocolate muffin made non GMO, whole grain, all wheat, um, organic, and with all the labels on it. I've carried that muffin for four years. Mm -hmm. And I take a picture of it every year. And it looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it's not changed one iota in four years. And it's the amount of preservatives that they put in it. And it's really detrimental to your gut, into your colon, into your intestines, and everything in your body. So just avoid those kind of things. So before we finish up here, we have some Olympic rules. Anybody have more questions about herbs growing? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I can grow sage really easily. I grow it on the dry side. So it gets hot certain also on the other side where it is quite moist. Mm. And I've taken cuttings and, and rooted parts and put them in pots and given them to people. Right. Nobody else seems to be able to grow it. You must have a touch if you love the 
Oh. <laughs> and what I understand is like when people say, oh, I'm going to go to the store and buy a, a, a regular thing. I are. I just pull up a hunk of oregano. There's so much root system on there. You can plant it immediately. You know, just, and mint. You know the deal about mint, right? Yeah. Mint. Grow it alone or leave it alone. It needs to be in its own top. It will take over everything you are on. But mint makes a great chutney. It makes great in fruit salad. It's great in a tea. It makes a great pesto. I use coconut oil in it and to make up the flavor different. But you can use mint a lot of ways. Just there's I have 27 kinds of mint on the shop. I have 27 kinds of mint. There's chocolate mint, there's spearmint, there's peppermint, there's all kinds of mints. Um, so you but just keep it in its own environment. Or it will take care of everything. So do all the herbs come back in the year? Not all. Some do, and it depends on how much winter is. One thing I've lived up here because I'm not used to winters, you know, having to learn over the course of four or five years what winters do plants, is now my time. I cut it off the end of winter about three to four inches above so I can get the leaves out and so it can. Otherwise, I have time that will be dead about that much and then the time will be green on the top. So but I cut it back before spring. <laughs> it's pretty green. Yeah. So, that was the thing that we use all out of it. And so you don't do it in the fall, it's more in the spring, but in the winter, the late mm -hmm. Yeah, in the winter, you don't really want to um, damage it too much. Let it let it protect itself mm -hmm. in the winter, and whatever kills off at the end of the winter before spring, cut it back. And herbs again, I still use those. So, any final questions? How about chives? My well, chives come back every year, which is crazy. Yep, so chives come back every year. Do you dry those also? Mm -hmm. I grow a lot of chives, so they use a lot of chives. But my chives, like if I'm roast potatoes, I'll put, I'll use my scissors. My scissors are my favorite thing. And put them over the roast potatoes. But I freeze a lot of chives because they're really easy for me to add pesto or really easy to add, add my garlic dip. I just keep them bags and bags in the freezer. And my trick is, I put a whole bunch of it in the baggie and I let it freeze because I'm lazy. And I take the baggie out, put it in the floor, and I stop one of my foot until they're all crunched up and broken. And then you just put it on the other block. That's my chopping with that. You don't dry them, you just freeze them, and that's it. They're and then you just take the baggie, you take the baggie, you take the baggie, like that, and the mom chopping is done for you, and you don't mess with us. And then you just pour it on the <laughs> Frozen. Yep, so they were great. In the same greens, the kales, your simple stuff, you can just put it in the bag and freeze it. And then Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest in herbs. I love them. I use them. I, um, it's also my way of calming down. I just, okay, I need an hour just to feast down my herbs. Um, it's a fun, beautiful process. The aroma is beautiful. They'll read more about them. You'll find that they also have a lot of things to do with your symptoms, your smells, and herbs also make things have more flavor. So, they so instead of buying so many spices, throw some fresh herbs, use them, and share them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.